Hello everybody and welcome back. Today we're doing a bit of a trip back through time. This is World of Warships patch 0.4.0 and this is an old map, a map that no longer exists currently in the game. This is a map that if you ever listen to a lot of the older players, especially ones from Alpha and Beta, they talk about this map a lot. This is the old Islands of Ice map. And for a lot of you who have entered the game more recently, well, this is a map that you never really got to experience. And I have to say, and this is from all these years of playing, that I would do anything, pretty much, to get this map back. And what made this map different? Like, why was this map so much different than what we have currently in the game. And I think a big part of it is that this is a map that just had a lot of different ways of playing through it, if that's the way to put it. So if you take a look at the map right now, to the north you have this big open patch of ocean, right? And that is, of course, covered by a couple of big islands. There was typically a lot of flanking actions that would happen, but anybody who went up there typically didn't have an ability to really engage stuff in the center. So you're really hoping to bypass things, get behind enemy lines, really appear as a nuisance at the back there. There's an area to the north there that you would see that has a lot of little islands sort of dotted in there. And that made for some very interesting, let's say, closer ranged battles. And there just wasn't so much of the island camping that you see in the game today. And a lot of people were constantly on the move. And also those islands were just not really tall islands either. They just were small. You'll, you'll see when I get up there, like the islands weren't that big. And the other thing sort of I noticed as I was sort of watching one of these older replays, and I watched a couple of them, is that you'll not see many players do the current very sort of static campy kind of play styles much more movement was required oh and by the way otago at the time didn't have a heel <laughs> so the otago that you're playing today is like a much improved version of this otago that we had back then in tier 8 oh but I, and matchmaking was a complete uh joke kind of thing back then because you'll notice that the enemy team has like a new mexico but you know we're in the games with the monkeys and stuff it was, it was great um you could do all kinds of wacky things back in the day but anyways going back to the everybody kind of moves thing i actually noticed this because i was starting to look at some of this gameplay footage from back in the day and it's in this battle in particular and i was like you know people moved around a lot Back in the day, constantly keeping yourself on the move was essential for survival. In fact, the saying or the rule of thumb back then in the day was, you know, keep moving because if you stop, you die. And another thing is I also noticed because I was watching this battle and going, why on earth am I using armor piercing in an Otago? Like I've watched other battles that happened back then and I definitely knew what the effect of HE was. Why the hell am I using AP all the time? Well, that's exactly why, because people kept moving, and by keeping moving from here to there, from here to there, and really sort of going around these islands and things like that, you had a very good opportunity of catching people, giving you full broadside, so you wanted the AP salvo loaded up so you could actually ambush them. It was a very different time. <laughs> I actually forgot about this. I had no idea this is actually how things were back then, because it's been so long, you know? The game has changed a lot in terms of a lot of things. And there are some aspects of the older game that I wish is still, you know, relevant in a way today. And part of it is the movement, right? Now, you'll notice here's like a really big island, right? Like this island here. If you sit behind it, I mean, you're safe, but you can't actually do anything because you can't really shoot over it. But take a look at these other little islands. You see these other little ones? They're just enough to break sort of visual cover. Not really enough for you to sort of sit behind, but they're enough for you to be able to get into concealment again. So like if you fire your guns, let's say hypothetically you get spotted. All right, so you would try to get behind an island. And by getting behind an island, you'd break visual um, line of sight and you'd get concealed again and there's this constant little battle of 
trying to maneuver yourself into the right spots. So it's like super cool. <laughs> It's actually super cool. One of the other things, um, and it wasn't from this version, actually. Um, I had another replay. Oh, by the way, for anybody who's wondering how the hell I'm still watching these replays, um, I actually still have all the clients for World of Warships dating back to patch 0.3.13. So I've got like these super, super old clients that allows me to watch these super old replays. Oh, yeah, and that's what I meant, right? Because of everybody moving, you get the opportunity to jump out and blap, Citadel, right? And it, it's such... A different time <laughs> is all I'm gonna say. So, anyways, yeah. So I've got I've got these old clients, and I watched a couple of replays from patch 0.3.13. And another really cool thing I noticed was back then, if you bounced armor piercing shells, you would actually see visually a shell kind of ricocheting a little bit. Like it's not like the shell bounces off a huge ways off, but you definitely see like a gold streak coming in, hitting your side, and then bouncing off a little bit. And not only that, but you actually got an audio cue of what sounded like sort of metal ricocheting off of metal. And I thought that was super cool because we don't really have that today unless my ears are just going really bad and I can't hear it anymore. But I don't think these days when I play, I'm able to really hear that clear and see that clear of a ricochet. And I almost wonder if it would be nice to have that back in the game, to be honest. Anyways, so going back to this battle, as you can see, everybody is actually maneuvering around the map. It's incredible. <laughs> um, yeah, this is like, I was so amazed by this because I had forgotten what the gameplay had really looked like. And it is so cool. I almost wish we went back to something a little bit more dynamic gameplay wise, you know? Oh yeah, and by the way, when you did end up on islands back in the day, you kind of screwed up. <laughs> uh, you you would beach and that would be like an, oh man, what did I do? Why did I not look at, you know, the map? Or why did I not look around me? What? Yeah, that was the reaction. Today, you know, hugging an island waifu is like part of the gameplay. And really, you just kind of, you go ahead and you do that. And it's like a sense of accomplishment almost. <laughs> Anyhow, um... So moving away from this section of the island that I've been fighting in, if you keep going south, you'll notice there's a whole chain of, like, at first less dense islands and then much, much more dense islands. And those used to be sort of like destroyer playgrounds. And so a lot of destroyer players would go in there and have those really close in, sort of very high intensity games um, against other destroyers, right? And if you're a cruiser and you went in there, like, you could do some things, but boy, was that a little risky, you know? But then again, if you pulled it off, hey, your team had a really interesting advantage because you had a bigger ship that was a bit of a threat down in the southern islands. And so simultaneously in the game, you could have multiple different zones of engagements that were happening in sort of, at times, kind of different environments, right? Um, in the open ocean, you'd have open ocean sort of styles of fighting. In the islands, you'd have an islands kind of fight. Just so different. Oh, and I did manage to get a torpedo hit too. That was nice. Okay, obviously he's getting angled. I'm getting angled. Trying to get my guns around here, you know. Trying to get into a situation where I can maybe finish off that Otago there. Trying. I mean, there's a lot of big enemy ships here, which is kind of scary. Okay, managed to get myself turned around here. Okay, that's not the world's best salvo there. Okay, almost got this guy. Almost. Come on, other turrets. I mean, at the same time, I mean, you know, going back and thinking about patch 4, 0.4, it's like, yeah, there were still things. I mean, I would still say there were definitely still things that a lot of us at the time were still learning about the game. I mean, a lot of the game mechanics, like how things worked, I mean, weren't even fully discovered until quite a few few patches later uh, and some even longer than that afterwards you know it, it wasn't one of those things that happened very very quickly I'm actually not sure why I didn't shoot at a very broadside of Magi with AP I could have gotten some pretty good damage but there had to have been some reason just the reason that I've actually forgotten because again time and era is different Maybe it was because I launched torpedoes in his direction but then I should be shooting at this guy too. Hmm. Yeah. 
Not really sure. <laughs> it has been too long. Obviously, I'm in a really bad spot. You can see I did manage to get three torpedo hits onto that Amagi, actually. So I've definitely done some serious damage there. Oof. Yeah, I definitely should be, like, turning around. Oh, nope. Lost one of my torps. Oh, boy. Not good. Lost a lot of HP. Turn, try to get torpedoes off. Never got that. Another citadel there. I'm in deep trouble here. I think I'm going to die here to one of these ships here. Yeah, blup. I am very much dead. All right, so things are... Oh, by the way, we still had old carriers. <laughs> RTS carriers. Um, and if you notice, matchmaking at the time was actually also imbalanced matchmaking. So we would have a CV and they wouldn't. So obviously, yeah, as you can see, there's definitely other improvements that have occurred in the game since back in the day. But I don't know why, but to me, there were so many, just so many good moments from the old days. It's kind of, like, I feel excited talking about it again. <laughs> like, man, I just, I went back and watched some replays and I watched some of the games happen. And just by watching the replays, I'm like, I am actually getting excited again, kind of like the way I was back when patch 0.4.0, you know, so much optimism, <laughs> you know, every game you played was like, oh, this could just be the best game ever, and yeah, hmm, kind of makes me wonder what on earth is going on lately. In World of Warships, you know, like, where has this feeling gone? Because even watching this game, I'm like, look at, look at it, you know? Like, the games were dynamic, you know? Like, every game really was different. I mean, had I played this Otago game, I could have chosen to essentially go in at least four different routes. And each of those different routes that I would have gone to would have been a different game, like a completely different style of game. And depending on what I ran into and how I decided to fight it, you know, all kinds of different things. And it would be really sweet because I think this year is like the fourth year anniversary of the game that, you know, we could look back on some of the things that originally were really good that, yeah, you know, over time has been lost and maybe re-examine some of the reasons what made it good and... Maybe, like, adopt some of the older ideas back, especially ones that have been lost, you know? And promote maybe a different style of gameplay. You know, a gameplay that is more maneuver, you know, and near constant maneuver, and then constantly being on your feet and thinking about what to do next, which position to go to, which route to take, where do you want to c conduct a flank, things like that. Because, boy, was it different. <laughs> <laughs> it was really different. Okay, okay, let's all go back to RTS CVs, by the way. Like, uh, I mean, I know the new rework CVs are not really, like, great either, but at least there's no, like, three torpedo bomber here use running around. Uh, yeah, and then this is even, like, prior to the versions that I think most people still remember. Right? This is, like, back in the day. Also, back in the day, you know, there were days where you could see, like, the worst, like, divisioning up possible. I still remember seeing, you know, one of the Islands of Ice games that I played, which was a tier, like, 8, 9 map. I saw an Otago div up with an Ishizuchi and a Wyoming, two tier 4s, and brought them into a game. And at the time, when we are like, what the hell, dude? The guy was like, what? Don't tell me how to play the game. It was just like, what? I see, I'm really glad those things have been polished out and, uh, don't happen anymore but there's still some things there's still some things that i wish would return like maps that are maybe more like this you know like maps that had all this dynamic sort of aspect to it even though this particular mode called encounter which is really kind of like epicenter was not the best mode right there was a version of this map that actually had four caps so there was one cap in the open ocean above one cap in the um island area that you know i was fighting in earlier there was one cap in the sort of middle lower area where you see a couple of islands and then there was like another cap area in like the really densely packed islands there was one of the maps that looked like like sorry one of the um 
sort of modes that was a cap contest, which was like four caps. And it made for some really cool battles. So yeah, I mean, this is me doing a little bit of reminiscing, shall we say. Step back into the history of World of Warships to remember what this game used to look and what it used to feel like and why so many people that I know still thought of the old days as being really good, you know? And until I started watching replays, truth be told, it was hard for me to really answer. The best I could do was, well, the map was fun. It was different. And that's about all I could remember. It was like not much more than that. But now watching it, now I know it was like these were the reasons that made it so much fun because there was always constant decision making, constant something new to do, something different to do, something different to deal with. You know, like you could have games where like a single destroyer could try to flank the top open area not get spotted by anybody and then suddenly pop up near your carrier and then you'd have to like go deal with it you know there was always these threats that you would have to take care of and the nc goes and rams the enemy azumo very good so now we've got three ships enemy team has two and they have the new mexico who is still alive i mean we have an iowa we have the hear you and we do have a colorado but you know, hey, 21 notch ships on a huge map like this, yeah, it was pretty painful. <laughs> oh man, I still remember going in like the slow ships on this map, and this map was a really big map, mind you. And yeah, if you were in a slow ship, you suffered. Oof, yeah, we're also running out of time, and I think this is still in the day where we had draws. This was another one of the issues that like draws were not fun, and it happened a lot, especially on Encounter. And yeah, so I'm also glad that that's kind of gone, right? There's not many draws anymore. I think I, you would still see one every so often, but it is super, super rare now. But back in the day, it was a pretty common thing to have draws. Yeah, so that New Mexico, poor guy, gonna get attacked by three. <laughs> torpedo bomber squadrons so okay all right all right all right you know the old cvs yeah there was a little bit too much at times but new cvs let's not talk about those either so let's just stay away from carriers today i'm feeling pretty happy watching this old game so i mean all in all you know there's so many aspects I and mean, i'm just gonna have to use that word aspects of what was in the game before that has, in a way, kind of gone missing. And well, I guess I could always hope. <laughs> I could always hope this map comes back. I mean, you know, so people could kind of remember what it was like, I guess. I mean, also take a look at like all the gray icons of ships dying. I mean, you can kind of see it, right? It's like all over the place, all the dynamic different battles that took place that caused people to lose their ships. It's pretty epic. Yeah, so we do manage to actually kill that New Mexico and that last little Cleveland. Oof, this Cleveland. He actually got, he actually survived this battle on like the smallest bit of HP. Because you actually see the Iowa will eventually get an actual shot on him in like that dying seconds. And you should see what HP that Cleveland ends up with. It is all. <laughs> Anyways, I mean, ah, uh, what do you guys think, you know? Like, you've watched this now, you've seen this battle, you've watched how it's kind of played out. What are your thoughts, you know? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below, because, yeah, truth be told, these days you don't see this kind of battles anymore, to be honest, you know? Especially if you go to higher tiers, like, with all those very high dpm ships and ships that like islands you know it's very different you know and i'm glad i spent some time and going back and looking at this it's a reminder of the good days <laughs> anyways folks take care have yourselves a good one and i'll talk to all of you again really really soon